As president of the University of Texas at El Paso, Diana Natalicio has presided over scores of the campus's milestones. But in February 2018, she reached a significant point in her own personal history. President Natalicio has now started her 30th year as UTEP's president. Her tenure is the longest of any public doctoral research university president currently serving. It is also the longest U.S. university presidential tenure in history for a woman leading a four-year public university or college. She has seen UTEP grow into a robust national research university nationally acclaimed for its access and excellence mission. Along the way, she has been named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People and one of Fortune Magazine's Top 50 World Leaders. President Natalicio took a few minutes to reflect on what the last three decades have meant to her and to UTEP. The Texas Board of Regents is having its annual meeting this month. 30 years ago at this meeting, you were confirmed as the president of the University of Texas at El Paso. Can you take us back to that day in 1988? Can you tell us the emotions that were going through your mind? How ready were you to navigate this path as leader of this university? And could you fathom it lasting as long as it has? Well, first, I, I think um, obviously I was an improbable candidate because there was a group of five finalists and I was the only woman. I was the only one from here. And the other candidates had perhaps more uh, one could have argued more administrative experience, though I had certainly been a dean and a provost. So I, I really didn't think that I'd probably be the choice. I thought it was good that we were diversifying the pool, but I didn't think that I'd probably be the, the ultimate choice. But I'm always confident about things that I do, and so I went in with an attitude um, in, in the final round of the interviews, which occurred right before the Board of Regents meeting. I went in with confidence and I thought I did fine and so, you know, it was, uh, it was good. But it was, of course, exciting to hear that I was going to be the next president of UTEP. And it's been an incredible run. I mean, it's just been absolutely amazing to me that it has lasted this long. This is a great moment for you and for all of us who have been a part of your higher education journey. You've overseen a significant rise in physical growth, uh, in research funding, in so many categories here at this university. Um, the team you've assembled and continue to reconfigure you know, through attrition and, and various things uh, has been instrumental in that. What is behind that team's success? And furthermore, um, what, is, what, is, what do they see in, in their leader, you, uh, to help facilitate that success? Well, I, I don't know exactly what they see in me as a leader, but um, I do know that they expect me to push hard uh, to be aggressive about not only defending UTEP from unfair criticism or from um, efforts to try to make us become that university that we shouldn't want to be, but I think our success has really been a huge team effort. Um, people who came to UTEP because they wanted to be here. Most of the faculty, most of the senior administrative staff are people who made choices, who had a choice and made the choice to come here. And that's because they embrace the idea of access and excellence. That mission of access and excellence has been the, the foundation upon which all of the rest of this has grown. And it's an unusual mission. We're one of the few universities that actually does it. Others use our mission now, our Access and Excellence brand, for, to describe themselves, but they don't really do it. And the reason they don't do it is because it's so hard. It's very hard to balance access, commitment to access, and opportunities for students who wouldn't otherwise have them with an equally strong commitment to quality and excellence because if you don't combine them and balance them in that way, then you either tilt toward access-driven institution where you're creating opportunities, but the degrees that you award aren't really competitive in the marketplace, or you tilt toward research and toward excellence, and access pays a price. And so to achieve that balance is extraordinarily uh, important and very rare. You have secured a growing amount of buy-in from the El Paso community. There are various partnerships and various colleges that are helping students and local businesses thrive. 
How important is it uh, to secure that, that support from external sources and how will it help you to navigate the future? Well, it, external support is extremely important, particularly because we are serving a student population of modest means. So any sources of revenue that come in that will help us achieve our goals is going to be most welcome. I mean, it's, it's absolutely critical. Now, what's interesting is that when I first became president, one of the things that we focused hardest on was the K-12 sector. Those are external partners too. And what was important about that is that we stand on their shoulders. 80% of our students come from El Paso County. So the work that they do, the quality of preparation that K-12 provides enables us to do our work more effectively and efficiently because students come college ready. So our whole focus through the El Paso Collaborative for Academic Excellence was really on the K-12 partnership. Then we were concentrating a lot of attention on research because that was another revenue source. That was a way of bringing assets to the campus, laboratory equipment, uh, faculty that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to recruit and that sort of thing. Now we're much more focused on economic development and on partnerships with the external community. Now all along the external community has helped us with scholarships and support for students in a variety of ways. But what we have to do now is figure out together with those external partners, how do we keep more of UTEP's graduates in the community to add to the quality of life, to change that student profile that you just mentioned. If, if we don't change the economic base of El Paso, then what we're gonna be doing is we're preparing students, quality programs in K-12, quality degrees from UTEP, and then we say goodbye to them. So we invest a lot in their education, but we don't get the yield on that investment. And so now what we're focused on is more trying to get, uh, cooperate with economic development teams to bring businesses into the community that will hire mm, better educated people and to help our own students develop the entrepreneurship and skills to take their intellectual property or their skills into the marketplace and create businesses here. So UTEP inches closer to tier one status every year. What will reaching that goal mean to you and where will it rank among your long list of accomplishments? We are a public research university. We're ranked in the top 200 nationally. So we're definitely in that space. And we haven't really gone out and declared ourselves tier one because nobody's using that term anymore. And so it's, even when it was very popular in Texas, nobody much elsewhere knew what we were talking about. So we've just focused on becoming more and more competitive in research. I think we're there. I mean, we are doing close to $100 million in annual research expenditures. We're at 94 right now or something like that. And we have, we have done just a masterful job of managing a research portfolio. We've hired wisely. We've invested very in, intentionally and intelligently in facilities, laboratories, and we have made that research enterprise become one of our major sources of revenue. So we're not as dependent on the state. We're not as dependent on student tuition. It's our research enterprise that's driving a lot of what we do now. Very exciting. In an era where women are feeling vastly more comfortable speaking out uh, in support of various causes, in support of each other, you stand as a beacon of hope. Uh, what is your message to women, uh, both young and old, uh, as they navigate the challenges uh, on their way to reaching their dreams? Well, I think the, the most important thing, whether it's for women or for men, um, is you've got to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, why would anybody else believe in you, right? I mean, I think it's so important that we build confidence in our students. That's part of what the UTEP Edge is about. That's part of what I think makes the biggest difference between students from low income backgrounds and those who are more privileged is that more privileged students are more confident even when there's no reason for them to be. And students from modest means are often highly talented, but they don't have that kind of confidence to push themselves out there. 
into the competition. They're hesitant to do that. What we need to do is believe in ourselves, all of us. I think women have particularly underestimated their own ability to play major roles. Um, we're seeing more and more women. When I became president, I think there were five female presidents in the NC2A Division I total, including me. Um, I think it was 114 of the major institutions. Today there are far more, it's close to a third, I think, of, of presidents, but it's not a half. And there are many talented women now who are moving into presidencies. People have gotten more accustomed to it. They don't think it's so weird. And so, you know, we're, we're moving forward. But I think, you know, whatever it is that you do in your life, um, you have to have a passion about it. You have to believe that you can make a difference in it. And then you act on that. And whatever it is, whatever role you play, you are going to have an impact. And having an impact in the end, it's not about a title so much as it is having an impact. And people are doing that every day. So many of your accomplishments could be considered crowning achievements for most people. What keeps one of the world's 100 most influential people going? Oh, just my passion for what I do. I love what I do. I love working with young people. I love the disarming quality of students who say things that sometimes you wouldn't expect. I think it's important to be disarmed from time to time, not to be so stiff that you can't see that, that um, you have foibles, be able to laugh at yourself. Um, but I think I'm, more than anything, I think I'm infinitely curious about things. I love to learn new things. I love to hear about people doing work that I couldn't imagine doing myself, whether it's in the arts or whether it's in engineering or wherever it might be. Um, I just find it so fascinating to realize the full range of things that people do. And one of the great things about being a university president is you get to learn about a lot of things that people are doing on a large campus like this. It's my great privilege to get to know people who are doing every kind of research imaginable. They're having experiences that I can't even imagine myself but I can learn from them about all of these things. And so university life is a wonderful life because it is filled with learning opportunities.